I have the keys to a 2023 Porsche 911 Carrera GTS Cabriolet America Edition. I'm gonna drive it and give you my impressions. Be sure to log into your YouTube account, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. Porsche has been making GTS models since the 1964 904 Carrera GTS, a fiberglass bodied wonder that's arguably more supercar than sports car. The GTS moniker was applied sparingly until the late 2000s when Porsche launched the Cayenne GTS, which started the formula all modern GTSs have adhered to. The first 911 Carrera GTS was introduced in 2010 during the 997.2 generation and, like the GTS Cayenne before it, offered more go-fast bits as standard equipment than the Carrera S, but it cost less money than a Carrera S optioned with the same equipment. Porsche even threw in some other standard and optional goodies that were never offered on the Carrera S, leaning more into GT3 territory. Today, the 911 GTS models follow the same formula as that first 997.2, but this particular example, the 911 Carrera GTS Cabriolet America, was taken a step further. Introduced at the 2021 Porsche Parade in the Poconos, it may drive and handle like any other GTS Cabriolet, but cosmetically, it's a big departure from the model line. The paint is inspired by the first 356 America Roadster, a paint to sample color named Azura Blue 356. RS Spider design wheels sized 20 inches front and 21 rear are painted white with a guard's red pinstripe on the outer diameter and wheel face surfaces painted silver. Inside, a standard black leather interior is accented by guard's red and pebble gray stitching. A GT Sport steering wheel is standard while the instrument cluster behind it has unique flourishes. GTS Cab Americas are so new and so rare that we can't in good conscience talk about the used market because there are so little data. As a new car, it was expensive. A 2023 GTS cab started at $155,400. An America edition started at $184,920. This example was closer to $250,000 than $200,000 out the door. The owners of this car are known for having some of the best Porsches, period. Whatever they buy, it seems to be the latest, coolest, most highly optioned version of that car. The GTS Cab America is no different. For the full list of options, see the description. This car was unveiled to the world, made its world debut at Porsche Parade. So if you're a PCA member, maybe you know this car uh, pretty well already. Um, but basically what it is, is 911 Carrera GTS Cabriolet, but really massaged and given the Porsche exclusive department treatment. Um, if you got the America uh, package or America edition package, you would get guards red on top of the gear shifter. You would get the stitching, the guards red and pebble gray right here. Uh, you get the guards red center marker um, and also the 18 way sport seats plus. Um, the car comes with a seven speed manual only and rear wheel drive. Uh, this owner optioned the rear wheel steering as well. Also of note is this car also has Sport PASM or the Sport Porsche Active Suspension Management System as standard. All right, there we go. It comes as standard with a Sport exhaust. Uh, which we don't have on yet, and we were going to start this drive um, with the top up. All right, so pulling away, very nice, easy clutch. Just always a sign, first sign of a, a, a nice car, an easy car to drive, very friendly, is a clutch that really works for you like that. So, as I said, this car comes only with a seven speed manual. Uh, so far, very nice shifting car. Um, being a Cabriolet, it's very quiet inside with the top up. Now I'm gonna give it a little gas.
Yep, so that's 473 horsepower, 420 pound-feet of torque. Uh, that's a lot of horsepower. If you remember, the GT3 RS 3.8 of uh, the 997.2 generation, that had 475 horsepower and it didn't have as much torque. Um, this is basically that horsepower and a lot more torque. Uh, it's, it's quick, it's very quick. And this is also the rear wheel drive model. So as we know, without all wheel drive, a rear wheel drive car is lighter. Um, now, this is not a light car, I would say by any means, but um, it's uh, lighter than if you had all wheel drive. Now I'll put the sport exhaust on, I think, or actually I'll put it into individual mode. The owner says that keeps the softer suspension but puts everything else into sport. Yeah, that is uh, a quick car. And I feel like I did heel toe, but nope, that is, it's on sport mode. So it did it for me. So I'm trying to figure out right now how to put this thing, uh, the throttle off of sport mode so I can try heel towing myself but I think I have to go into the menu for that. I'm gonna put it into Sport Plus. I'm gonna take the auto blip off just to see what that feels like. So as you can see, actually, if you know where you're looking, you just go to the car area and you have auto blip, you have spoiler extended, sport exhaust, the chassis all in one place. It's pretty intuitive, actually, if you know what to look for. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get on the gas for a second here. You know, what's crazy, so I was driving a 911 Carrera T pretty recently, and from about 6,000-ish, maybe 6,300 RPM and up, the car made this crazy sort of feral metallic sound, uh, if you can call a sound something like that. This just made a very similar sound at around the same RPM. Um, engineered in, I think, a little bit to give you that stand the hairs on your neck up a little bit. So rev matching in this car is not hard at all. Yeah, you can feel the uh, rear engineness of the car in the turn. If you get off on a little bit, the nose pushes a little wide. Yeah, easy to heel toe. The brakes are a little bit touchy if you're not on them very hard, or maybe if you haven't warmed them up yet, but very progressive, at least you know what to expect. So, love the steering wheel, actually. Um, I don't know, I don't think it's any different, but for some reason it feels very nice in my hand, light, and I'm getting a little bit of feedback through the wheel. Nothing harsh, only what you need. Um, yeah, again, this car, responds really well. Easy to shift. There's a little bit of turbo lag. You know, that's to be expected. It's a three liter twin turbo flat six. So of course, you're gonna have a little turbo lag, but it's not much and it doesn't sound very turbo-y unless you're doing certain things with the throttle. Now, at this point, I'm gonna put the roof down actually. I think I just do that does everything automatically for me. Yep, and there we go. So I'll keep the windows down. I think you press the center button here for the windscreen to go up. There it is. Now here we go. Yep, very nice car really, really easy to get going really quickly in it. Now we're coming here, put the top down, you let in the exhaust noise a little bit more, a little bit less interior noise, you hear just what's going on outside in the world. Again, very easy clutch to work. I think the shifter is actually one of the favorite parts of this car for the owner. And I think he actually convinced somebody to buy a manual 992 Carrera S or a Carrera GT, Carrera 4 GTS um, because of how nice that manual is. 
Yep, very nice. On the brakes again, just to feel them out. Very nice, just a little tuppy, touchy as you get, get onto them. Oh, there's nothing like a drive in the morning out here. We're in South Carolina today and it's uh, late October. So what better season to drive than, than today, right now? Yeah, tons of torque. I'm gonna turn the chassis off of sport into normal just to see what it feels like. Yeah, a little bit nicer around here. The roads aren't perfect. This car stands out. It's a, a blue, it's a pretty unique color. The wheels are white with painted faces, painted silver faces and red pinstripes. Um, you've got guards red accents all around. Uh, but it's a real, it's a car that stands out yet when you hop into it, it feels approachable as any other 911 uh, that I've ever driven. You know, um, I wouldn't say it doesn't feel special. It just doesn't feel like you have to baby it, like you have to worry about the car when you're driving it. You know, it's there for you. The power is addictive. The sound is amazing. I really do love the sound, yep, of these turbocharged flat sixes. Not much of a turbo noise unless you're under certain throttle conditions, as I think I covered a little bit earlier. Um, it's a very naturally aspirated sounding en engine in most cases. Now I'm gonna do one more pull, because I wanna hear that metallic ping again. Yeah, you hear it more when the top is up. So this is another one of those cases where if you're getting a cabriolet, you're gonna get a different experience driving the car, obviously with the top down or top up. But interestingly, that engine note that I heard with the top up isn't there when it's down. It must just be covered up by different noises outside the car and wind noise. Whereas when the top is up, you really get that metallic just sort of roar when you're at the top end. Man, what a drive. Uh, nice set of roads around here. Um, as I said, South Carolina in the fall. It's like the perfect weather to have the top down with the jacket on and feeling perfectly comfortable. And I haven't even put on the heated seats yet. Um, so go figure. It's been a little while since I've been in a Carrera GTS. Uh, in fact, have I driven 992 Carrera GTS? I, I might not have. This might be the first Carrera GTS I've driven from the 992 generation. Um, and man, what a car to be able to drive a uh, America edition of one of those cars. Now, as I was saying, you notice how nice the car is on the inside when you're driving it. Um, you see the leather you know, covering almost everything in the car. We have the Burmester surround sound system, which, you know, you got that right there. You don't have just the Bose, you have Burmester. Um, I've used these sound systems in the past, in past cars. They're amazing. Um, and really, you know, black interior, very sporty, very simple, but just with some flourishes. It's just very nice, very nice place to be. Um, but it doesn't make you feel like you're driving something just crazy that you have to tiptoe around. Um, you can just kind of get in and drive. Car show is the first rating I'll go over. Uh, this car is gonna score near the top for car show um, for pretty obvious reasons. Beautiful blue color, Azura uh, Blue 356, and I'm a, I love blue, and you've probably never seen this on any car that you've seen unless you've happened to see an America Roadster or, um, of the 356 or 964 generation, which are both extremely rare cars. You show up to a car show in this, and their eyes will go straight to the wheels, which, as I covered, are, are white um, spokes on the, the inner spokes, 
and painted on the faces, silver, hyper silver, I believe, with the guard's red pinstripe. When I first saw this car, it was the wheels that just really popped out and I couldn't help but think, man, if you ever curbed one of these things, it's gonna be expensive. Um, yeah, this car just pops and it's rare, um, limited edition. Um, I'm gonna give this a nine and a half out of 10 for a uh, car show. Uh, you show up in this and people will be flocking around and you'll probably be parked in the front especially if you're at a PCA uh, event because it has very similar colors. Um, daily driver. So I feel like sometimes I factor in rarity and stress level of driving a car that has nothing to do with how it actually drives to daily driving. And sometimes that matters. With this car, man, it stands out. People are going to be looking at you and I'd be scared of just... I don't curb wheels often, but every once in a while, I find myself in a situation where, yeah, so we'll see. Um, you could daily drive this pretty easily. It's a 911, as I always say, you have plenty of storage in the front and you have storage in the back. Um, in fact, I had my suitcase camera bag with tripod and a camera slider with the back seats folded down in this car pretty easily. Um, can certainly fit your your daily needs in here it rides well just like any uh, 911 does it does have sport passes, so it rides a little bit stiffer particularly in sport mode but I like it you know I like a slightly stiff car in a normal mode it's perfectly acceptable over most roads um, easy to shift I'm sure it gets good gas mileage man but this is not a car I'd want to daily drive probably because just it it attracts a lot of attention. Um, maybe that factors in a little bit. Let's call this a 7.75 for daily driving because you could do it, especially it's a new car right now. Um, why not? Road trip. This will score a lot better on road trip because again, most Porsches are better road trip cars, meaning they usually do well at daily driving, but for all the reasons they're good at daily driving, they do well at road trip. But on a road trip, I feel like you have to worry less about parking, you know, or curbing a set of wheels like this, or doing those daily things that maybe a Porsche isn't quite as good at as a economy car. Um, again, this is a car for uh, something like Porsche Parade. When you show up to visit with all your Porsche loving friends, um, this would be a car that is right up their alley. You know, it, it screams Porsche Club of America, short of being a car that was made for PCA members specifically. You'll be comfortable on your way there. You get there your uh, to your destination, you'll have a car that you'll really, really want to drive. I'm going to give this an eight and a half for road trip. So for fun factor, okay. Um, you can tell this is a really fun car. I love the three liter flat six in GTS form with the 473 horsepower, tons of torque. You have enough power to know you can get in trouble, um, but you can control the throttle so well and so easily and feel it through the seat of your pants, through the wheel, what the car is doing, that it would be tough to get in trouble with this car. Um, but it has that little bit of edge, especially when you're up there past 62, 6300 RPM. It really has that metallic snarl, you know, that really just hits hard. Um, when you have the top up, because that's when you can hear it, when you're going through the gears. Um, it makes all the right noises with the sport exhaust. The seat holds you in. The car, the front end is really solid. It throttles steers even when you're not going super quickly. So if you're going through a turn at, you know, medium speed, just having a little fun, you get on the throttle, it'll start to push a little, you get off, and that rear end will start to feel a little bit lighter. Um, and yeah, very engaging car to drive. And, um, you know, for me, not driving a coupe back to back with this, um, I don't see any downside to why you wouldn't get a, I, I don't see any downsides to getting a Cabriolet unless you're just a coupe person like myself and that becomes a personal preference sort of thing. Um, but purely from behind the wheel, a lot of fun. I don't see any performance detriments uh, to getting this over a coupe if you're just trying to drive your favorite back road. Um, this will score pretty high, actually. Um, I'm going to give it a 9.25 because I feel like I just scratched the surface on the road we just drove. And um, it's one of those cars that I, I would love to spend a little more time in and get to know how it handles and uh, 
how it acts when you're driving it. So that's my one mile review. I hope you liked it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content on our channel, please subscribe. And at the very least, watch our videos. Until next time.